kasih setiamu nyata bagiku Hikmat kebajikan tersedia bagiku Sebab Allah sanggup terlibatkan segalanya Dan anugerahnya sangat besar bagiku Berkati, aku dilempahi karena alat sanggup untuk menyediakan aku diberkati. Aku dilempahi atas sempurna. Good morning, church. How's everyone doing today? So just before we start, I would like to invite each and every one of you to just stand up wherever you are. Um, bring your family around. Um, and let's just get into this time of prayer before we start our worship and our uh, service today. And I'm just going to lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for um, this wonderful morning, this wonderful time that you've gathered us, Lord, wherever we are. And to have this opportunity to listen and to uh, experience your service and, and listen to uh, your words today, Lord Father, through this online service. Lord, I pray that through this service today, Lord Father God, Lord, may people be touched and their hearts be open to receive from you, Lord Father God. And um, we just want to commit this time into your hands, Lord Father. Uh, we thank you for, uh, for you've always been with us, Lord Father God. And Lord, today we just pray, we ask of your presence to just come into our midst today, Lord Father God. We bless your name, Lord Jesus, and we commit this time into your hands once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good at your mercy endure forever. Sing, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good at your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good at your mercy endure forever. People. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Sing, we worship. We worship you. For who you are, you are good. You are good. Come on, Lord, you are good at your mercy and you're forever. You are good and your mercy endure forever. People, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. People, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. We worship you.
clap your hands. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. Sing. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. Yeah. You are good all the time and all the time. You are good. Yeah. And you are good all the time, all the time. Say you are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, yeah. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good people. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. People, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. Yeah, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. For who you are. For who you are. Oh 
Christ, my living 
God, we thank you because you are a living hope, God. God, you're not dead, but you're alive. And Lord, even as we are surrounded in a situation of pandemic, in the situation of death, Lord, you are still alive, God. And yours is the victory, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for giving us what we have, Lord Father, what is in our hands, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this is from you, Lord Father. These things are from you. God, we surrender this online service that we're doing into your hands, that Lord, even though we may be far from each other in person, Lord Father, but Lord, in spirit, we are near, Lord. Lord, we pray for increased unity, Lord. Increased unity for this church, BM Plita. Lord, we pray for increased wisdom, not just for the leaders, but also for all of us, Lord. Wisdom to navigate times and seasons, Lord. Lord, we pray for increased awareness of your presence. And we pray for more of you, Lord Father, in our lives. More of you, Lord Father, more of you. God, we just want to spend the rest of this time into your hands. We pray that may your spirit, Lord Father, anoint Elder Richard even as he preaches the word. Lord, may every word that proceeds from his mouth be from you, Lord Father. May it accomplish his purposes in our lives. Lord, even as he's speaking on growth, Lord, this is the topic that you have spoken to us for this year. And Lord, you are truly working in our midst, Lord Father. You are truly working in our midst. And yours be the glory, Lord Father, forever and ever. We just want to shut everything into your hands. We just pray and ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Of God's people say, Amen. Pass the time to Elder Richard. Thank you very much, praise team. <clears throat> good morning, church. It's good to see you again, weeks after weeks. We really need to praise the Lord because He's been so good, so loving, so caring to all of us these last few weeks, the last few months. This morning, I'd like to talk to us about our team. Be implemented team for the year 2020 and 2021. Our team, growing in faith, connecting with others, and sharing God's love. Connecting with others, sharing God's love, growing in faith. In a way, it's challenging to implement with the current MCO. That's why we really need to <clears throat> find ways and means on how we can implement our theme this year. But before we go deeper, let's pray first. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge that there's none other God but you and you alone. You are the living God and we are your living temple. Lord, you have a calling for each and every one of us. And we want to fulfill that calling. We want to be the kind of person that you have always desired us to be. We want to be a living witness for you. We want to shine for you. We want to be salt and light of the world for you, Lord Jesus. For that, speak to us, teach us, Lord, that we may truly be the living witness that you want us to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I said, I'll speak on our theme today, and our theme is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, chapter 4, verse 16. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grow and build itself up in love as its part does its work. 
Now, the church have summarized that into three main points. One, growing in faith. Two, connecting with others. Three, sharing God's love. In Bahasa, it's bertumbuh dalam iman, bersekutu, dan ber- berkongsi kasih Allah. Now, growing in faith. Faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone. In our case, it's a complete trust and confidence in the Lord or God. For us Christians, one of the cornerstones of a personal relationship with God is, of course, our faith, our faith in Him. Our connections, our bond with the Lord will be much stronger if we have faith in Him. The stronger we have, the closer we are, we are, we are with the Lord, the stronger is our faith. So faith is, in a way, the cornerstone of a relationship with our living God. Growing in faith, <clears throat> from Romans chapter 10, verse 17, we read, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. The Living Bible says, So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Hearing the good news about Christ. That's how faith is. And from Hebrew chapter 12, chapter 4, verse 12, faith for the word of the for, for the word of God is alive and active. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any edge sword. It penetrates even to dividing souls and, and spirit, joints and marrows. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Now, as I said, just now, the Living Bible says, so faith comes from hearing, hearing the good news. The message, the good news here is concerning Jesus, the salvation that he brings for us. The good news here is, in fact, talking about the gospel. And from <clears throat> Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, and Romans chapter 10, verse 17, just now, we know and we are told that faith is alive and active. It comes from hearing the words. Faith is, faith is to believe God's word is, very, is, is the very essence of receiving the promises that he has, that he says we can have. To have faith, we can have that promise. The more we apply God's word, the stronger is our faith. Now, talking about the promises of God, Someone by the name of Storm, in fact, studied the Bible and tried to look and count all the promises that God made in the Bible. He came up with something like 8,810 promises in the Bible. And of those, 7,487 of them, in fact, are related to human by, uh, um, or to mankind are, in fact, to mankind. And let me just mention a few of those promises. From Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, say, Come to me, all you, all you who are weary and burdened, and I, will take, uh, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in your heart, and, and, humble in, in your heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Come to me, who are you worried and burdened? There's so many problems they were facing today. Worried about the COVID, about the pandemic, worried about our job, losing job. Said the Lord, said, come to me, you who you are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Can we do that? Bring, come to the Lord. And from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, this is what Paul said. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient. Here, talking about God's grace. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power, God's power, is made perfect in weaknesses. Therefore, I will boss all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest upon me. 
That's from that's the promise that God had from Second Corinthians chapter uh, twelve verse nine, and from Isaiah 40, 40 and thirty three. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Let's hope in the Lord. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Wow, how good it is for us to be with the Lord. And from Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 11, this is one of my favorite verses. For I know the plan I have for you, declared the Lord, plan to prosper and not to harm you, plan to give you hope and a future. Yes, indeed. The Lord has a plan for each and every one of us. The Lord has made the future for all of us. And from Exodus chapter 14, uh, uh, verse 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. This is what he said to the, to the <clears throat> Israelite. The Lord will fight for you. More promises from chapter eight, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, and, <clears throat> and we know that in all things, God works for good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All things work for good for those who love the Lord. Wow. Let's love the Lord. Because when we love the Lord, all things work for good for us. He cares for us. He helps us. He leads and he guides us. All things work for good for those who love him. And from Isaiah 41, 13, For I am the Lord your God, who will take hold of your right hand and say to you, do not fear, I will help you. Yes, in time of pandemic like this, in time of fear, in time of uncertainty like this, the Lord will hold our hand. The Lord will lead us. The Lord will guide us. And the famous verse from John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. How many of us have received the Lord? This is his promise. He has given us his one and only son. Do we have, we, have we accepted him? Have we received him? Have we asked him to enter our life? We should. And again, one of my favorite verse from Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me. Test me this. This is what the Lord said. Test, test me in this, said the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgate of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Yeah. Test him. Test him. Bring your tithe to the Lord. Test him and see if there will be in fact, he will bless you. He will bless us richly. So, simply put, to grow in faith means to grow spiritually. It is to mature in both knowledge of God and Godly living. That's to grow in faith. Now, if faith can grow, can it die? Can we lose it? Yeah. What do James say in James chapter 2, verse 26? Faith without work is dead. Wow. Faith without work is dead. So meaning to say, faith, anything can grow, can die also. Anything that grows can disappear as well. And indeed, faith, if we don't exercise it, if we don't use it, it is, it can, we can lose it. Faith without work is dead. Here, James, in fact, affirmed that deeds or work are the products of a living faith. Of course, work do not justify us or make us righteous before God. No, our work are mean to salvation. Rather, our works are the fruit that grow from our obedience to God's command. Other religions, NGOs, are also champions of doing good deeds. What is different between their good deeds and ours. What's the difference between theirs and ours? I think uh, maybe theirs is more like a show off to get noticed looking for praise. 
I remember some years back, there was a plan, in fact, carrying a lot of the leaders, headmen from Barrio to Miri. Along the way, and unfortunately, the plan crashed. We lost a lot of our headmen. During the funeral here at our B B SIB uh, graveyard, there were a lot of people coming. A lot of people. Why? Because there was some YB there as well. And when the YB left, sad to say, most of them left as well. So basically, they were there to be noticed. They were there because they were lo looking for precious. But what about our good deeds? What does the Bible say about our good deeds? From Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, it said, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Wow. Ours is to be done secretly. Ours is to be done diligently. Ours is not to be done, not to show off, but from within the hearts. And of course, our good deeds should be the fruits of the Holy Spirit that is living in us. And from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, it says, But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. That should be our good deeds. It should be the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's life that reside in us. It's this joy, love, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That should be the, the good deeds that we have, that we practice. Keeping our faith alive is done by being obedient to God's teaching and command. As our faith comes from hearing and putting the word into practice, our faith has power. It has authority. It can bring blessings. It has power over the evil one. It has power to heal the sick, to overcome evil forces if applied according to God's law and command. That's faith. It has power. It has authority. It can bring blessing. It can bring healing. And I know there are many people that have been healed through prayer by faith. More faith, more power, more authority. And this is what we read from Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here today, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. You know, a few years, um, some years back, we went for an outreach to Ulunia, Rumah Belili. There, they request us to provide them with gravel for the road to the church. At least 50 tons of gravel. In faith, we said, yes, we'll do our best. And when we came back, we approached one of our friends, a church member who was working in the Batunia, in the Batunia Quarry. He said, yes, we can give you 50 tons of gravel. I said, okay, thank you very much. But you have to collect it from the quarry and send it to the right place. I said, wow, how are you going to send it? Then we said, okay, let's go to JKR. We then approached JKR. We went to see the boss. I said, boss, we said, we need, we, we have been given 50 tons of gravel. We need to send it to Rumah Belili in Ulunia. Can you help? This is for the church. They said, yes, we can do it. We can help you. And they gave us the lorry to transport it. There you are, faith. We may not literally move the mountain from Batunia to Rumah Belili, 
but God provide, provided a way for us to transport 50 tons of gravel from Batunia to Rimah Belili. That's how faith works. Now, the second thing that we have from our team is connecting with others. Why do we need to connect with others? Well, in fact, this is the main emphasis of our theme, uh, the, the theme verse from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. From him, the whole body joined and held together. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grow and build itself up in love. As each part does its own special work, it helps others other part to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Yes, we need to connect with each other in order to grow, in order to be healthy, in order to be effective, in order to have love. We need to connect with each other. We connect with, with others through obeying and applying God's word. Romans chapter 4, 10, verse 14. How then? Can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? That's true. How can we reach people out there? How can we win them? How can we bring them to Christ? How can they receive Christ unless they hear the words? And how can they hear the words? unless someone is there to preach the word. And how can someone preach the word? Unless we send. That's it. We need to connect with each other. We need to work together. That's the essence of our theme. We need to work together. We need to help each other. We need to work together. We need to connect with each other in order to be effective. And again, from Romans chapter 4, verse 12, verse 4 to 9, for just as each of us has one body with many members, and those members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the others here talking about being connected with others again. And verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us, each of us. If, our, if your gift is to prophesy, prophesying, then prophesy. If in accordance with your faith, it is <coughs> serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. How many of us knows our gift? How many of us are applying our gift as we should? Verse 8, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. I'd like to pause here for a while. You know, a few weeks back, we put some message in our what apps, BM Prita Christian what apps, to say six people were baptized, five people were baptized today. And we received a look-up look response from the church. We're not asking that you say, oh, thank you so and so for winning so, so many. No, we're not looking for that kind of praise. What we are looking for is for you to say, thank you, Lord, for saving so and so. Thank you, Lord, for working in his heart. Thank you, Lord, for working in her heart. And thank you, Lord, for receiving her. And that's what we are looking for. Because in Luke chapter 15, verse 7, in the same way, I tell you that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous ones. So we should be thankful. We should be joyous when members, when people out there give their life to the Lord and surrender themselves and receive Christ. We should be joyful. We should you know, be thankful to God. So, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, 
do it diligently. I think the youth, the the insect leaders have been, <laughs> the youth leaders have been working diligently, helping us during this time in fact, yeah. Thank you so much, youth. Thank you so much, young people. You are doing great. Continue to lead, continue to guide, continue to show your blessing. You know, that's the most important thing. Love must be sincere, verse 9. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Yes, cling to what is good. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Verse 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal by keeping your spiritual favor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, passion and affliction, faithful in prayer. Faithful in prayer. How many of us spend time to pray for the church? How many of us spend time to pray for the others? We have to be faithful in prayer. In verse 13, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Do we share? God taught us to share. Share with the love, uh, with, with the Lord's people who are in need. Share. Share. It's very important for us to share. You know, we went to Long Jack last year, and there they called one of our friends, Pastor Lonet. Because he share. They call him Pastor Lonet because he share. Share. Let's share God's love wherever we are in whatever we do. We must share. And verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low positions. Be willing to associate with people of low positions. Don't be proud. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace, at peace with everyone. Yes, indeed, as Christians, we need to live in peace with everyone. It is important. Okay, the third point, sharing God's love. Now, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, it says, each of you should give what you have decided in your own heart to give, not reluctantly or other compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. This is what we need to know when we give. We must not give reluctantly. We not, not, must not give under compulsion, but give cheerfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all time, and having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And here, to abound in every good work, here is to increase our faith. To increase our faith. And the more faith we have, the more power, the more authority we have as well. It's, it's very important. And sharing God's love, God's blessing, is where He wants to test us. Sharing God's love, God's blessing, is where He wants to test us. It's where He wants to prove us. He wants to prove Himself to us, His faithfulness to us. Do we know that? Can we do that? He wants to test us. And this is from the verse that I say I like very much just now from Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. He said, test me in this. That's what the Lord said. Test me in this. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. He said, the Lord said, test me in this. Test me. That's what he said. Test him. 
said the Lord Almighty, and I and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. How nice. How nice. If we bring the whole tithe to the Lord, He said, that's me. And indeed, He will throw open the floodgate of heaven and bless us with much, much more, much, much more that there will be not enough room for us even to store it. That's what we need to do. God wants us to test Him in our giving and the sincerity in giving. And to conclude, the current conditions due to COVID-19 pandemic require us to stay at home. Stay at home. Avoid crowded places. Schools are closed. Churches closed. No face-to-face meeting. Even baptism. We cannot baptize people here in the church. We have to look for a fast-flowing stream to baptize people. It's, there's so many things that are so difficult. But of course here, the government recommend is in fact for on good. It's for on good, but the challenge is for us to act, to fulfill our theme, to grow in faith, connect with others, and to share God's love. That's the challenge. Because we are supposed to stay at home, not to meet other people, but our theme requires us to connect with others, to share God's love. And this is the main challenge to grow in faith, to connect with others, to share God's love. And, of course, my request, my purpose for sharing this message is to plead to us to find ways and means where we can implement our theme with, within the context, within the means of the, in fact, government requirement for MCO. I thank the ladies, in fact, a uh, few weeks back, Pastor Agan was on self-quarantine for two weeks. We informed the ladies, ladies, please help him, provide him with food. And they diligently, every day, without fail, sent him lunch and dinner and fellowship with him as well. Thank you so much, ladies. We give you 100% for that. You have done so much. Thank you so much for being so kind to him, for our, for our pastor. And I know our members are also praying for Sister Supang in Kuching. Thank you so much. Continue to pray for each other. And of course, we're using to meet, we're using uh, this uh, Zoom and so many things. Yeah, continue to do this. Young people, continue to find ways and means in which we can make a difference. Even though there's so much constraint, so much challenges here and there, I'm sure you can think of ways and means in which we can reach others. Online services, Christian education is one of the ways in which we can, in fact, uh, do all these things. May I request members, cell leaders, ministry leaders, council members, elders, pastors, let's work to find ways and means in which we can reach out to our members so that indeed they will know that God cares. During this time is the time when most people require AIDS. This is the time when we, make, we need to make a presence known. People need God at the most at this time. We have been reminded, in fact, uh, when BM SIB started 93 years ago, it started in a very simple way. The missionaries simply witness and pray. Witness and pray. We can do the same thing. Witness, we can witness through Zoom. We can witness through what apps. We can witness through our phone. We can call people and then pray for them. And of course, as I said just now, God wants us to test him on a tithe and giving. And the church needs our tight. As you know, we are supporting more than 10 full-time workers. 
if we are not giving our tight, we may not be able to support them. They have a family to feed, a wife to feed, children to educate. We need to support them. But if we are not paying our tight, if we are not giving an offering to the church, we may, the church may not be able to pay them. And that would be very sad. We don't want that. So my plea to you as leader of BM Plitter, as your presiding elder, is please, please, tight. Bring your tight. Because when you do so, as God promised, said, test me, test me. And indeed, I am very, very sure because it's God who makes this promise. I'm very, very sure God will bless you even more. And of course, this is the time for you to shine, for all of us to shine, for us to arise and show that we care. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us the need to support your servants who are there to serve you. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for reminding us to connect, to share God's love. Thank you. Lord, indeed, there may be challenges, there may be difficulty, but we know, Lord, the more we grow in our faith, the more we apply your words, the more we claim your promises, the more you're going to use us. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We want to arise. We want to shine for you. Bless be your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. A service end here, but uh, do not go yet. Let's listen to the church notices first. The church office is open every week from Tuesday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Also, the church service is postponed for the time being. Every Tuesday, we will have our corporate prayer meeting. Prayer points will be sent out through WhatsApp every Tuesday evening. Due to the current situation, the weekly prayer meeting at church will be postponed until further notice. Christian education lessons via Zoom will be available every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Meeting invitations and passwords will be sent out prior to the meeting. For more information, do contact Elder Lau. Home cell groups are ongoing every week. Do contact your cell leaders for more information. Your tithes and offerings can be sent to the church through check, cash deposits, and online banking. The church bank details are as follows. Don't forget to inform our church treasurer, Deacon Richard Pangiran, if you've sent in your tithes and offerings. It's the month of February. We at BM Blita would like to wish those who are celebrating this month a very blessed birthday. May our Lord continue to bless you and your family. Okay, thank you so much. The Lord bless you. And for our Chinese list, I mean Chinese members, we wish you a blessed Chinese New Year. Let the year be <coughs> a fruitful year for you to serve and to win small soul for the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Thank you so much. See you again next week. Lord bless you.